hey everyone before we get started don't forget to like and subscribe it'll really help the channel out a lot i think one of the first moments i remember as a sentient human being was watching my brother beat super mario 64. i vaguely recall him me and my mom watching him play on the downstairs tv when it was in a different spot from where it is now I remember him beating Bowser and the end credits rolling. I think I cried, but I can't remember why. I do remember my mom consoling me though. I think it was because I thought the game was over, that I would never see it again. How wrong was I? So. Outside of multiplayer games like Call of Duty or something like that, I've never played a game as much as i played Mario 64. And trust me, there's a lot of stiff competition in there. Even all these years later, not just me, but tons of Mario fans around the world keep coming back to this classic title. Even with the remake in the early 2000s on the Nintendo DS, we still find ourselves going back to Mario on the N64. Why is that? Is it the nostalgia? Is this game actually as good as we remember it? I think you might already know the answer, but I'd like to give a bit of my take on it. Here we go. So I just have to admit, I wasn't around to witness that jump from 2D to 3D like a lot of people did. From the get-go, I had a Genesis, a Super Nintendo, and an N64 growing up, so to me, it was, it was just all games. Unfortunately, I wasn't wowed by any technical marvels due to not realizing that they're technical marvels, but what instead got to me was the gameplay. I had such a fun time just running around with Mario, trying random things. And back then, getting a star was such an accomplishment. To put it into a bit more perspective, I barely knew how to read back then, so there was no way I was figuring out what to do unless I watched my older brother or one of his friends that would come over. I didn't even understand the file system. One day, when I was finally granted the chance to play the game by my brother, I accidentally deleted his files while he was out at a friend's house. I liked the uh, stone icon that Mario had when you start the game from scratch. What I thought I was doing was a good thing, but I guess not. Needless to say, he wasn't impressed and there I was again, waiting for another chance to play. I should add this detail in, but all of the systems at the time were my older brothers, so when the newer systems came out like the Dreamcast and the PS2, he gave me those older ones as hand-me-downs, which I didn't mind. It was nice because I could play even more and make up for all the times he wouldn't let me. And that was nice because I had a few friends in the neighborhood who also had N64s, but we would all have trouble with certain stars and things like that, so we all got together and helped each other out. As time went on, I stopped playing Mario 64 and, and the N64 in general. We moved on to the GameCube and then other systems from there. I even ended up giving away my N64 for a short time, but I held on to Mario 64 just in case. I remember right before the Wii had come out, me and the neighborhood kids were speculating on what could come after the GameCube. I had envisioned a system that would let you play all of the old games because that's what PlayStation did. So I thought, wow, wouldn't that be great if Nintendo could do that? Well, looks like our wish was granted. I believe it was around that time where my love of gaming was rekindled. It wasn't as commonplace as it is now. I'm sure a lot of people remember this, but I think when you kind of got a little bit older, games and, and other things, anime, whatever, it was kind of, oh, gaming is lame, ha ha ha. So you kind of didn't really do it in school. But once I rediscovered the game, I just couldn't stop having a ball with it. I even looked up things like speedruns and tasses, because when I first saw these things, my mind was blown. I could not believe Mario was moving that way, they were beating the game under 70 stars. This was crazy to me. As you might have guessed, this is where I found out about BLJs, which was just absolutely mind-blowing at the time. And when I first pulled one off, I couldn't believe it. And so, following another re-release on the Wii U, and just me playing more N64 games in general to help my Japanese studies, I found myself getting better and better at the game.
I think that's a part of what keeps the game so much fun for me. Sure, we can talk about the controls, which are amazing, I don't care what anyone says. Or the level design, which is also great. There's just something about all the possibilities you have of getting each star. You want to style out? You can do that. You want to take it easy? Sure. Why not? I just recently played through this game again, and yeah, there were some times I wanted to try to challenge myself. I even died a bunch of times on certain stars that I know I could easily get, but I thought, well, where's the fun in that? Let me try something different. I might as well. There's not limitless possibilities, but there are a couple parallel universes full of them. I know, I get it. There's two big complaints that I know people have. One is that the levels kick you out after you get a star, and the camera. I get both of these complaints, but for me personally, the kick out doesn't bother me so much because I like seeing how the levels change each time you leave and re-enter. As for the camera, yeah, sometimes it's a pain and it sucks. I, I totally agree with that. But I don't think it's as bad and as broken as some people say though. And of course, can't leave out the music. If I had to pick a best song from the game, which is just so hard to do, I'd have to give it to Dire Dire Docs. So calm, so peaceful, I love it. But can we really forget the first time we heard this? So you get three fights with Bowser. In addition to that, there's a few mini bosses scattered throughout each level. I swear, sometimes it's just so easy to take them out, but other times I have a really difficult time. I never knew why he was a different color in that last fight, but it really added to the intensity of it. It felt like a real super boss. I love the Japanese title of this level, Kenku no Tatakai. It translates to Battle of the Heavens. It doesn't get much more fitting than that. You get your standard Mario enemies in the game as well, but you gotta take them out in different ways than you might be used to. Except Goombas. They're always the same. Poor guys. Except those giant ones. I had no idea you could defeat these snowman guys just by running around them in a circle. It totally blew my mind the first time I did it, and it was very recent too. And for me, that's something wonderful about Mario 64. Even all these years later, after all these playthroughs, I'm still finding new things. I remember wandering around the castle grounds, not knowing how to play the game, but now it's different. I have more insight on the movement and more optimal ways to play, so I guess I'm compelled to try to beat the game as fast as I can and as clean as I can. It really is great to see people are keeping the game alive in their own unique ways. From speedrunners getting all 120 stars in a little under 1 hour and 40 minutes, to personalized copies of each game. Mario 64 truly is timeless. It comes from an era where we just started 3D gaming in general, and despite those drawbacks, we continue to play it because of the tight controls, the level design, hints or large doses of nostalgia, but to put it simple, it's just fun. I can't sit here and tell you if Mario 64 is the greatest game of all time or the best Mario title of all time, but it's damn near close. Here we go! Thanks again for watching, and as always, see you again soon.
so much for to playing my game.